Welcome to another session of our Sunnah Followers Hadith class. And this is the class where as we take a look at the Hadiths uh, from the authentic sources. And in this class, there are Hadiths wherein the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used parables to help illustrate or break things down and explain to us. And let's take a look at the Hadith that's up for discussion tonight. And the source of this hadith is Sahih Muslim, so you know that it's authentic. And um, for those of you who have not yet uh, bought the book, again, uh, this is the book. The book is entitled, The Prophetic Parables. It's compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. This class is held every day at 11 p.m. But that's how the book look. It's a beautiful orange uh, sunset or sunrise book. And the book only costs, uh, what, $5? So make sure you go to the link here, adleeonline.com, and pick up your purchase of this book. And also not just this book, but also pick up the, a copy of The Messenger, because The Messenger is the book that we are using in our new series on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And not only do you pick up that book, but also another book, The 40 Hadith for Islamic Schools, Part 1. That is the Hadith book that we are using for the children. The 40 Hadiths for Islamic Schools, Part 1. That is the book that we are using for uh, the uh, Sunnah Followers Kids program, which will be tomorrow. And with that said, let's look at the hadith for today. This is a hadith, whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sleeping and some angels came to him. And when they found him in his bed, some of the angels said, oh, he's asleep, so let's leave him alone. But the other angel said, no, his eyes are asleep, but his heart is awake. So in other words, we're going to say or tell him what it is that we have to say. Remember, we talked about another hadith where the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, how did he receive the revelations from Allah? He said sometimes he would receive them like a, the, through the ringing of a bell. A big bell would sound in his head, which would be deafening. And then Jibril would tell him whatever Allah wanted to tell him. Or sometimes Jibril would speak to him himself and tell him what Allah said. Or this would happen. The angels would come to him while he was sleeping and they would speak to him. And in this case, uh, when they found him sleeping, one of the angels let them know his eyes are asleep, but being a prophet of Allah, his heart is always awake. In other words, of the prophets of Allah, they're always conscious of what's going on. And so then the angel said, in regards to him, his example is like a man who builds a house and after building the house, he offers a banquet and sends a messenger to invite the people to come and celebrate. So for those who accept the invitation, they go to the house and they eat the good that is there. But for those who did not accept the invitation, they don't go to the house, nor do they benefit from eating any of the good meal that is there. And when the angels made that statement, another one said, explain to Muhammad what that means. Break this parable down so he understands what we are saying. 
And again, some of the angels said, but he's asleep. And the other said, no, no, his eyes are sleeping, but his heart is awake. He's a prophet. He's a messenger. He can hear. He understands. So that's when the angel continued. And they said, well, what this means is the house that was built represents paradise. And the person that went out to invite the others to it, that is the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what we are saying is whoever obeys Muhammad obeys Allah and whoever disobeys Muhammad disobeys Allah. And this is something that Muslims today have deviated away from. We have a lot of Muslims today. Many of them are Arab and they'll tell you that uh, they don't accept all the hadiths. They only accept a hadith kutsi. If it's not a hadith kutsi, they don't want to hear it because if we accept it without it being in the Quran, mentioned in the Quran, then we're associating partners. <clears throat> we're making the Prophet Muhammad <coughs> higher than the than Allah. This is nonsense. They forgot this. The Prophet Muhammad never spoke from himself, his own desires or his opinions when it came to the religion. Anything that the Prophet Muhammad told us in regards to Islam came from Allah. So whatever he tells us to do, we have to obey him because obeying him is obeying Allah. But if we sit there and say, no, I'm not going to accept that because Allah doesn't mention it, then we're disobeying him and in turn we're disobeying Allah. So the angel explained this to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the angel continued, and the angel said, Know this, Muhammad, the good is distinguished from the bad, and the believers are distinguished from the unbelievers. Those who obey you, Muhammad, and those who follow you, they are the believers, and they are good. But those who do not accept your invitation and do not follow you, they are the unbelievers and they are the bad. So this is a wonderful hadith that we need to put into practice today, especially since people claim to believe in Allah and his messenger, but they don't because they don't accept everything that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us. So there's many lessons we learn from this hadith. Number one, to refuse the message of the Prophet Muhammad and to refuse his dawah has serious consequences. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to all mankind in jinn. He called all people to Islam, not just the Arabs. And he used different methods when calling them because he cared about their welfare. We also learn from this hadith that to obey the prophet, this is the criterion that distinguishes the good people from the bad. So if you know people who call themselves Muslims, but they tell you that they don't accept all the hadiths, or that they don't accept a hadith unless it's a hadith kutsi, or you know they're not gonna accept a hadith unless it's mentioned in the Quran because this is putting the prophet on a level equal to Allah. These people are bad people. They're the losers. They're the unbelievers. They're the people of the left hand and they will be in the hellfire forever. So you disassociate with them. As Allah says in the Quran, we don't sit in the company of the wrongdoers. We don't sit in the company of those who mock Allah and his messenger. And also we learn from this hadith that the only way to salvation is by not only following the Quran, but the Sunnah, which are the things the Prophet Muhammad said and did as well. You have to do both, not just one. And finally, this hadith teaches us that one thing that differentiates the prophets of Allah from us is even when they're asleep, their heart is still awake. That means that they're still conscious of what Allah has to say to them. Wonderful hadith for us to ponder. 
wonderful hadith for us to put into practice. Any comments? How does this hadith impact you? Who would like to share? Take the mic. I would like to share. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. This is this is amazing because it it does has a lot of uh, messages in it because it's telling you uh, about the prophets of Allah, about how they can be sleep. I had never thought of that physically, but their heart can be awake and they always receive the message from Allah whether they are physically asleep or awake and that's amazing to me because i had not i had never thought of that and another good thing too about this is that when when uh, so many times we have heard that when uh, we receive a message or when, when the house is built as it was built by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he went out to the people and invited them to the house to, to eat of its food. It's a parable within itself because it's, it's not just eating like physically food like bread and meat but it's getting the message from Allah. And so those who refuse to go to the house to receive this message, they have really lost out. Yeah, they rejected the truth. They're the Kafirs. They're the people of the left hand. And as Allah says, who are the people of the left hand? They're the ones that will be dragged by their faces and thrown into the hellfire. Allah would not look at them, would not speak to them because they were unbelievers. Even though they may have claimed to have been a Muslim. How could you be a Muslim when you deny Muhammad do Rasulullah? How could you be a Muslim when you disobey the prophet? When Allah says, obey the prophet and you are obeying me. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded that all men of this nation do not trim your beard. But when you look at these famous personalities here from America with trim beards and you guys want to call them scholars, that ain't a scholar. A scholar would never uh, publicly uh, uh, dis dis uh, disobey the Prophet like that, you know. You say you believe in him, but you pick and choose what of his, which of his commands you want to uh, adhere to, you know, people of the left hand. Yeah, anyone else would like to contribute? Yeah, so this is one of my favorite hadiths. I liked it as a child when I was growing up because I liked the parable that was made, like Sabrine say, uh, with the house. You know, subhanAllah, building a house, a beautiful house, and then inviting everyone to come and eat to help celebrate with you. So you build a house and you uh, then have a, 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 a banquet and invite the people. The, some people accept the invitation and other people don't. The ones that accept the invitation and come to your home, they have a, a beautiful time and they benefit from the food. But those who reject the invitation and didn't come, they don't, they miss out on that. You know, that's the most beautiful parable of all to me. And we have to remember that good is what differentiates a, 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 a person who is evil from a person that is not. A person that is evil is not going to deliberately disobey a law. A person that is evil is not going to deliberately disobey the Prophet Muhammad. Yes, go ahead, Norto. For me, um, you know, we have many people nowadays who try to, you know, add or take away from our religion and they refuse the teachings of the prophet. And it's just, it just, it's not okay. You know, also like the prophet Muhammad, you know, had characteristics we as humans can implement in our lives, such as like he had compassion for the people, you know, he was concerned for his people that, you know, on the day of judgment, Allah will allow, will allow him to like intercede for his nation. And it shows like, you know, there are some prophets they use that do like the dua that Allah gave them for them 
for themselves, but the prophet, like he's using it for his nation. Like he saved that special dua just for us. And also people like try to compare the prophet to other speakers of the today. And it makes me sick because like, they're comparing him to people that you, you can't compare where you don't even, you know, compete. It makes no sense. And just like there's there's a difference between good and bad. And as Muslims, you know, we're supposed to advise one another and stuff. But not most people do that. They just allow other people to like sin and think that like, you know, it's OK. Like we're supposed to enjoy the good and forbid the evil. But most people do not. Yeah, it's pathetic, guys. We need to really work on changing the condition of ourselves to that which is pleasing to Allah. We need to turn back to the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. We need to learn more about the Prophet Muhammad so we can in turn try to emulate his character, emulate his ways and become more like him because he was sent to be a guide and an example and a role model and a life coach to all of us. Instead of us adapting men and women of today who are nothing as our life coaches and mentors, we need to get back to the Sunnah and make the Prophet Muhammad your center of life coaching. All right, I wanna thank everybody for joining and participating in this session. Uh, please make sure everybody is here for the classes tomorrow. Don't forget, we tomorrow is the Sunnah Followers Kids Day here, and uh, we will be teaching the kids Arabic they will be reviewing Fatiha and the four kuls of the Quran, how to recite properly. That begins at one o'clock. And then we have the Hadith class, you know, that I will be teaching for the kids. We'll be using the book 40 Hadiths uh, for Islamic schools. We have a wonderful Hadith tomorrow to go over. And then also we will do the Sirah that we're continuing with the story of Prophet uh, Yusef. Is it Yusef or Solomon? Prophet Solomon. The story of Prophet Solomon uh, will be continuing that uh, tomorrow. So please make sure that everybody is here. Have your children here, ages 5 through 18. All children are welcome, ages 5 through 18. Put the hijabs on the little girls because they love to get on their video cameras and talk, you know, with their little beautiful hijabs on and all of that. And the boys too. All right, so I'm closing out here for tonight. Feel free to join us in the Zoom room. I'm going to have to, for those of you parents who want to see the movie, the, the next tomorrow's uh, two parts, I mean, two sessions, which is only uh, 15 minutes each, 30 minutes, I'm getting ready to play it in here because I got to look at it since I'll be substituting tomorrow. I have to look at the um, movie so I can make some questions up. Oh, and also, just to let you guys know, we're uh, Dr. Asim, we have a new teacher that will be joining us with the Sunna follower kids. She is a bona fide uh, Islamic studies teacher from Egypt. She lives in uh, uh, Alexander, Egypt, and uh, she will be teaching uh, the Quran class, and I'm going to wheedle her in to help uh, with Isra with the Hadith and Sirah too. So we have a real bona fide Islamic studies teacher that will be coming in to help with the kids. Uh, inshallah, she'll start next week, not today. Uh, not to, yeah, not tomorrow, but next week because Dr. Asim has to go through some training with her. And also, uh, she's going to work on a beginner's Quran Tajweed class for the adults. We're going to try to also have her teach the beginner's Quran Tajweed because I just don't have the time, guys. I mean, I know I taught you guys the last time and got y'all reading, but um, I got too many other classes to do, so I needed help. So, alhamdulillah, Dr. Asim's bringing in some help. So make sure that everybody is here tomorrow. And again, if you want to see uh, the little 30-minute uh, session that we have for tomorrow, I'm getting ready to put it on because I have to watch it to make my uh, quiz up. So join us in a Zoom room. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayhi.